Your topic is lymphoid tissues and lymphatic organ. So our intended learning outcomes for this day is to describe the lymphatic organs and to describe the different types of lymphatic tissue. As simple as that. Okay, but first, no, um, if I ask you what is the fundamental type of tissue for the lymphatic tissues and lymphatic organs, your answer would be connective tissue. Okay? The specific the subtype is lymphatic tissue, and the specific subtype are the following. Okay, mamaya isa isa natin yan. But first, generally speaking, when we say lymphoid tissue, these are actually aggregates of lymphocytes in different regions in the body. Okay, aggregates of lymphocytes. So if it's just a portion on that on that particular organ, it's called lymphoid tissue. But if that specific organ has so many lymphocytes or there are aggregates of lymphocytes, that is what we call lymphoid organ or lymphatic organ. Okay? The parenchyma of the lymphoid tissue is lymphocytes. The stroma is reticular tissue. And as we have learned in the connective tissue, it is their type 3 collagen, the reticular tissue. or It is composed of reticular fibers. Other cells that are found in the lymphoid tissue are your plasma cells, your macrophages, neutrophils, and eosinophils. Well, actually, lahat to na pag natin last week. Okay? Okay, this is an example of a picture showing you a lymphoid tissue. No? It is composed of reticular fibers, the one that is labeled as letter R, and M stands for macrophages. No, they engulf certain microorganisms for phagocytosis. Okay. Okay. So generally speaking, when you say lymphatic tissue, the function is or are to protect the internal environment from invasion and they damage by foreign substances, cells, or even microorganisms. It is actually a component of an immune system. So, hindi nang pwede natin sabihin na histology of the immune system. It's part of the immune system, but as um, as I've mentioned kanina, in, at your level, we'll just be discussing lymphatic tissues and lymphatic organs. Okay? The parenchyma of lymphatic tissue is lymphocyte. They are described as having small spherical or oval with, with large rounded nucleus or slightly indented on one side. They are narrow, non-granular. They have narrow and non-granular cytoplasm. This is actually uh, categorized as a granular lymphocyte or a granular WBC. Alright, they are small and large. No, What does that, that imply? When you say small lymphocyte, they are dark staining and they, uh, they range from 6 to 9 micrometers. Majority of the lymphocytes found in our body are small lymphocytes. However, there is what we call large lymphocyte. The characteristics uh, feature are the same, but the size of the large lymphocyte um, from the word itself, large, it's 9 to 15 micrometers uh, with pale uh, staining and they are actually your lymphoblast. No? Um, we talked about this last week that whenever it is a blast, it is immature. Right. Okay, what does, the, what does it do? Um, on the previous discussion, lymphocytes are increased in viral infection, right? But in, for the lymphatic system, the lymphocyte also serves you know, as antigenic stimulation that synthesizes this small lymphocyte. So it's for antigen stimulation. What else? The small lymphocytes recognize these foreign proteins and store this information as memory cell. Okay? There are two types of lymphocytes. We have T lymphocyte and we have B lymphocytes. They are referred to as the memory cells. Right? Now, lymphocytes also, they are programmed to recognize and react with specific types of antigen. So later we will be discussing that. Alright, this is an example or a picture showing you the lymphocyte um, differentiation. So, the lymphoblast from the bone marrow 
um, we can find a B lymphocyte, a CD4, CD8 T lymphocyte precursor, and a natural killer lymphocyte. This is these are all found at the bone marrow. Now, when this comes into circulation, it's in the blood. The B lymphocyte would remain as B lymphocyte. The T lymphocyte precursor would still be remain CD4, CD8 T lymphocyte precursor, and the natural killer lymphocyte. However, in the thymus, this T lymphocyte precursor CD4, CD8 will go its differentiation, meaning there are this is the site of T lymphocyte differentiation. T as in thymus, no? Madaling tandaan. It will differentiate it into a CD4 lymphocyte and a CD8 lymphocyte. And these three are actually four. The B lymphocyte, CD4, CD8, and naturally killer lymphocyte would go to the connective tissue, epithelium, and secondary lymphoid organs to perform its function. Okay? Alright. Now, the bulk of our discussion um, would be this one. Classification of lymphoid tissue. So in the orientation in the laboratory, these three are actually specific subtype. Okay? Lymphoid tissue is the subtype. Fundamental type of tissue is connective tissue. And these three are the specific subtype. Now we will discuss this one by one. Okay, when we say loose lymphatic tissue, it is characterized by having a few lymphocytes. They are described as having a regularly and loosely scattered lymphatic tissue, but the stroma still are the reticular cells and the reticular fibers. Example of loose lymphatic tissue, you may find it at the trachea and the esophagus. Specifically class, they are found at the lamina propria of the trachea and esophagus. Uh, where else? Loose lymphatic tissue can also be found at the internodular, deep cortical, and medullary sheets of the spleen, and internodular regions of the palatine tonsils and Peyer's patches. Okay? Internodular regions. These are the loose lymphatic tissue. Now take note, it's not loose ang Peyer's patches. So we will be discussing this in a while. The internodular regions lang, not the Peyer's patches. Okay? So the keywords are few lymphocytes, they are irregularly and loosely scattered. Example would be trachea and esophagus. Alright. Next, the dense lymphatic tissue. Now, it is characterized as having lymphocytes being an abundant and closely packed. Thus, the term dense. Example of dense lymphatic tissue are ileum, your colon, and the vermiform appendix. Now, these three are not lymphatic organs. Part of that organ is lymphatic tissue. And we will be discussing this in the laboratory uh, in a while. Okay? So, meron po palang dense lymphatic tissue at the ileum and the appendix. Um, pero hindi sila lymphatic organs. Take note. No? They have this portion in that organ as lymphatic tissue. And lastly, we have the nodular lymphoid tissue. The nodular lymphoid tissue, look at my cursor, paganyan siya, pabilog. It forms an aggregate, compact circumscribed aggregations of lymphocytes. And this nodular lymphoid tissue is also known as your lymphoid follicles. Okay? They are not permanent structures. They are also described as having a solitary lymphoid nodules. Then they are found at the lamina propria of the digestive, respiratory, and urinary tract. And the nodular lymphoid tissue, the perfect example of that is at the walls of the pear's patches. And you may also find nodular lymphoid tissue at the vermiform appendix. Now, Doc, tingin nyo to, merong vermiform appendix sa dense. Meron ding nodular lymphoid tissue sa uh, vermiform appendix. Now, depends on the location or the structure that is being pointed. Okay? Kapag hindi siya, kapag the, if the, if the uh, lymphocytes are just abundant and closely packed, there are dense lymphatic tissue. You may find it at these three organs. But if we ask you to identify a lymphoid tissue, specifically a nodular lymphoid tissue, you may also find 
This nodular lymphoid tissue in the walls of the ilium called your pears patches and at the appendix. So meaning, in the ilium and the appendix, you may find two types of lymphatic tissue. You have dense type and the nodular type. Okay? Is that clear? Wala man lito, ha? You may find two types of lymphoid tissue in an organ depending on the structure that is being pointed kapag sa practical exam na. Okay? Alright, yeah. so this is an example of a nodular lymphatic tissue, lymphoid tissue. Can you see my uh, uh, cursor? This one is an aggregate of lymphoid tissue. So thus it is called a nodular lymphatic tissue. Now this is actually a pear's patch. No? If it is found at the ilium, specifically at the lamina propria, like this one, another this, this is a nodular lymphatic tissue, you may not call that nodular lymphatic tissue, but it is a nodular lymphatic tissue. And at the ilium, you may call this as pear's patch. Pear's patches. So this is an example of a nodular lymphoid tissue. Okay, take note. Sabi mo, Doc, pwede din makita ng dense connective tissue. Yes. In between this nodular lymphoid tissue, like in this area, in this area, no, hindi sila pabilog, pero they are known as your dense lymphoid tissue. Yeah, the one that is at the, na may red. In between the pear's patch, not the lamina propria still. So, this one is a nodular that is a pear's patch in between the nodular like in this area is your dense lymphoid tissue is that clear so in this vermiform appendix and in the ilium we may find at the lamina propria both nodular lymphoid tissue and dense type of lymphoid tissue hi okay. hey doc uh, uh class i will be mentioning a lot of terms Let's start, let's start with germinal center. Okay? In a lymphoid nodule, there is the central pale staining portion. We call this a germinal center. No? It is composed of bigger lymphocytes that are often with mitotic figures in normal subjects. And if there is a, another nodule, we call this one the germinal center of Fleming. Okay? That is also known as your secondary nodule the corona on the other hand is the peripheral dark staining portion of a lymphoid nodules so at that area small lymphocytes with dark staining nucleus and closely packed cells that is that comprises their corona okay now what does it do so wait okay now uh in a lymphoid nodule and for example ito yeah, this is a lymphatic nodule at the center of which is the germinal center. That's the pale staining. At ito ay sobrang dark staining. Now, the dark staining portion right here is the corona that is composed of small lymphocytes. But the pale staining at the center would be the germinal center, which is composed of bigger lymphocytes. Okay? Now, what does it do? The, the germinal center... That is the site of active production of lymphocytes. They trap antigen in the presence of antibody, so forming an antigen-antibody complex. Kaya pala, the germinal center or the lymphatic nodule is also part, no, an integral part of the immune system. Because this is where antigen-antibody complexes are found. Okay? What else? At the germinal center, they are involved in functional differentiation of B lymphocytes. And as I mentioned kanina, with the memory cell, this germinal center are related to a long-term memory response to IgG antibody. Now, very timely, for example, when is a long-term memory response of an IgG? As we all know, IgG is an antibody. No? This is for chronic or long-term. When we say IgM, that is for acute. 
no? When you say IgM, ah, meron ka ngayon um, sakit. Let's take for example like a COVID. COVID antibody testing, no? Um, if you are positive to IgM, you have an acute, no? Meron ka ngayon ongoing infection. But if you have an IgG positive, you have a chronic na. Your COVID phase ka na. Kaya siya nagpa-positive because of the lymphatic nodule called this long response. Ibig sabihin, kaya pala nagpa-positive, even dengue. No? Kapag ang nagka-dengue ka na dati, like five years ago, at nagpa-check ka ng, ng dengue ngayon, ang nangyayari is that um, nagpa-positive ka pa rin. Kasi nga, meron siyang memory response, itong IgG. So, nakatatak na yun sa'yo. Alright, so those are the three lymphatic tissues. We have the loose, dense, and nodular lymphatic tissue. Uh, as I mentioned kanina, lymphatic tissues, pwede siyang nasa isang part lang ng organ. But for the lymphoid organ, majority or all of that organ is composed of lymphatic tissue or lymphatic nodule. We'll discuss that one by one. Okay? These are the following lymphatic organs. Your palatine tonsils, your lymph nodes, your thymus, another inguinal lymph nodes, and your malt or your mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue that are found in the small intestine. The red bone marrow here is not a purely lymphatic organ. Okay? Again, these are the tonsils, your lymph nodes, your thymus, your spleen, by the way, and yeah, my inguinal lymph nodes. Okay, let's start with the thymus. Thymus is actually found at an anterior of our heart. Okay, now when you say thymus, it is composed of a capsule. It is it is composed of a loose connective tissue. Trabeculae, on the other end. So this is the thymus. Pakpakitan ko na agad kayo ng trabeculae. So this is the capsule. This one is the trabeculae. No, from the capsule, it traverses into the inside of the thymus. This is also a trabeculae. Trabeculae. Ano pa? Diyan. Trabeculae. Trabeculae are septae that subdivides the thymic lobes into thymic globule. The, the parenchyma of the thymus are actually lymphocytes class. No? But the, the, the term... Uh, that is more appropriate for a thymus is a thymocytes. Parehas lang sila, it's lymphocyte. But when we say parenchyma of the thymus, you have to answer thymocytes. No? Doc, pwede man natin sagutin na lymphocytes? Yes, because generally speaking, it is the parenchyma of the point issue. Pero nasa thymus tayo. Kaya we have to use thymocytes. Okay, the stroma of the thymus is also of a reticular cells type and some macrophages. Okay, okay, doc, another, okay, class, this is the cortex, uh, sorry, the, the connective tissue capsule. You have two areas, you have the thymic cortex here, and at the center, inner, is the thymic medulla. Yeah, okay, ano nga to class? The septae called your trabeculae. Okay, you have your outer cortex and you have your inner medulla. Alright, so let's start with the thymic cortex. This is a peripheral zone of dense lymphoid tissue consisting of a T lymphocyte. Now, class, if you, uh, if you, can you observe the lymphatic nodules here? No, you pabilog. No, hindi siya, wala siya lang lymphatic nodules. No? At the thymus, cortex. Ha? The blood supply is supplied by capillaries and this is the active site of lymphocyte production at the thymic cortex. The epithelial reticular cells or the stroma are less numerous. They are stellate in shape with large oval nucleus and scanty acidophilic cytoplasm. So, all you need to know at the Cortex is that it is a peripheral zone. They do not form lymphoid nodules, and this is the active site of lymphocyte production. Okay, this is your cortex class of the thymus. 
um, you have the epithelial reticular cell, the one that is pointed right now. These are your epithelial reticular cells. These are your thymocytes or the lymphocytes. But at the thymus, it is known as your thymocytes. Okay. Okay, what about thymic medulla? Uh, at the thymic medulla, you may also find a few uh, pale staining lymphocyte. We can also find reticular cells. But at the thymic medulla, they have it's more acid of it has more acidophilic cytoplasm and extremely pleomorphic no maraming mga iba ibang classing sizes and shapes for the thymic medulla please take note i'm 100% sure na itatanong natin to sa uh, practical exam and theoretical exam this is uh, brought about by hassel's bodies or hassel's corpuscles or thymic corpuscles. These are the synonyms of Hassel's bodies. Again, Hassel's bodies or Hassel's corpuscles or thymic corpuscles. This is the characteristic structure that is only found at the thymic medulla. Okay? Do not just answer thymus. I will be strict on this. Hassel's bodies or Hassel's corpuscles. Or thymic corpuscles are spherical or oval bodies. Uh, it's concentrically arranged cells of epithelial reticular cells with acidophilic central area. No? Uh, thymic medulla also is the site of the development of the lymphocyte that is responsible for cellular or cell mediated immunological response. What does that mean? Examples of your cell mediated immune response are the following. You have a homograph rejection during um, organ transplantation. Delayed cutaneous reaction to protein antigens, also known as your delayed hypersensitivity. Graft versus host reaction. If you notice, uh, graft versus host, this is very common in organ donation, no, in organ transplantation. Yes, they are matched initially, but when this for example, a liver transplant, no, during the first few hours, there's no reaction. Uh, later on, no, uh, years from now, five or ten years from now, if this uh, patient happened to have a sensitivity reaction or it presents with so many symptoms, you suspect a graft versus host reaction. What else? Another cell mediate, mediated immune response or your immune response to to microorganisms such as your fungi, bacteria, and certain viruses. Okay? So that would be a cell-mediated immune response brought about by your thymic medulla. Okay, now this is, H stands for Hassel's bodies or Hassel's corpuscles and the scattered thymocytes. Okay, scattered thymocytes. So, ang cute-cute niyan. In the practical exam, we will be, I'm 100% na itatanong natin to. Um, identify structure pointed. No? That, that, that's thymic medulla. Where can you find this? At the thymic medulla. Sorry, Hassel's corpuscles is the structure pointed or thymic corpuscles. Uh, location of the structure pointed is thymic medulla. Okay? This is the site. This is responsible for cell-mediated immune response. Okay. All right, so that's the first lymphatic organ. Next is your lymph nodes. In Tagalog, it is your kulani. No? They are described as encapsulated, just like your thymus, spheroid or kidney-shaped organ along the course of lymphatic vessels. Now, in the lymph nodes, there is this hylus. No? This is an indentation on one side that is uh, where, where blood vessels enter or leave the lymph node. It is known as our hylus. And in the, in the lymph node, we have different lymphatic vessels. So if there is hylus at the center, now we have afferent lymphatic vessels and efferent lymphatic vessels. Now the difference is that when you say afferent, they enter the node at the convex surface that provided with valves that open towards the node. So papunta, that's afferent lymphatic vessels. Uh, li efferent lymphatic vessels naman, they enter above the node at the hylus and these valves are actually pointing away from the hylus. So, 
this arrangement of the lymphatic nodes will ensure a unidirectional lymph flow through the node because of the valve. So the afferent, efferent away from the hilus, so hindi siya pwede bumalik ulit ng lymph node. No, just like in the blood na pwede bumabalik. But in the lymph node, it ensures a unidirectional lymph flow. Okay? It's not bidirectional, not multidirectional. Again, please state note, the arrangement of that lymphatic vessels are in unidirectional lymph flow. Okay? Okay, as I mentioned, it is composed of capsule, but this time your lymphatic nodes are made up of, your connect, of, of dense connective tissue. It also has the septar trabeculae into the substance of the organ, which acts as separation. Stroma would still be reticular tissue. Again, class, what is the type of collagen for reticular tissue? It's type 3. Okay, as part of the stroma supporting cells, Lymphocyte, other than lymphocyte, you may also find plasma cells and macrophages. No, if you can, if you remember, it's a lecture that in connective tissue, plasma cells are described as having spoke wheel or cartwheel in appearance. Right? Okay, what else? There are lymph sinuses. These are irregular channels transform into intercommunicating chambers, usually na sa loob na yan, no? after the trabeculate. Okay, just like your thymus, no, uh, your lymph node also has lymphatic cortex and lymph node medulla. Okay? Cortex and medulla, but they are the same. Outer, densely staining portion of cortex. At the medulla of the lymph node, it's inner and paler ang staining portion ng cortex. Uh, sorry, ng medulla. Now, this is a lymph node class. No? Look at the marker this is the capsule they are encapsulated made up of your dense connective tissue all right so in the cortex yeah this is the trabeculae okay <clears throat> this portion right here sabi dito this one is your cortex of the lymph node okay this one is the paracortex, and this one is the medulla. Okay? Again, cortex, paracortex, and the medulla. Let's discuss it one by one. Okay? At the lymph nodes, specifically at the cortex, you may find dense masses of lymphoid cells traversed by collagenous trabeculae and sinuses. Now, you may find lymphoid nodules. Okay. They may have germinal center, that's the, also known as the secondary nodule, that is surrounded by a dense lymphoid tissue. Sabi ko, cortex and medulla lang. But in the paracortical area, this is at the deep or inner cortex, it is composed of diffuse lymphoid tissue. Now, the lymphocytes found at the paracortical area are your T lymphocytes. So, check natin. If this is their cortex, sabi ng, in, ng description, it is composed of lymphoid nodules which may have germinal center. At this portion class, these are your lymphatic nodule. No? This is again a lymphatic nodule. The lymphatic nodules are only found at the cortex. Okay? Trabeculae. So kapag mga inner Cortex na ang tawag. This is known as your paracortex. And what, what type of cell are found at the paracortical area? It's the lymphocytes, specifically your T lymphocytes. Okay? And this is just a high power magnification of a lymph node at the cortex. So this is the stroma. This is the capsule. No, this is your node. Nodular lymphatic tissue. So obviously, kapag nakita kayo ng nodular lymphatic tissue, it is your cortex area. Okay? Malapit siya sa capsule. You have the stroma here. At uh, kung malapit siya sa, sa capsule, outer area siya. So this is your cortex. Your clue here is are the presence of nodular lymphatic node. Nodular lymphatic tissue. How about in the medulla? So... 
The medulla is composed of medullary cords. No? You may also find aggregates of small lymphocytes that are organized around the small blood vessels. That's what we call your medullary sinuses. So you have MC, the medullary cords, and MS, or the medullary sinuses, or the small blood vessel. It also has trauma with reticular cells and reticular fibers. And you may also find small lymphocytes, mature plasma cells as part of the stroma. So in this area, no, if you see this one, these are medullary cords. And the space in between is your medullary sinuses. No? This is an example. The, the, those are the scattered lymphocytes. Okay? Now, in this, if, if you are at the medullary cords and the spaces in between are the medullary sinuses, you are at the medulla of the lymph node. Okay? This is high, uh, low power. This is the high power magnification. <clears throat> These are your medullary cords. Medulla nga eh. And your medullary sinuses, yung spaces in between those um, cords. Now, the cells pointed right there are your lymphocytes. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, lymph node, again, it is unidirectional. So, anong flow ng um, lymph? It's a lymph node. So, at the afferent lymphatic vessel, it carries lymph to the organ, right? That lymph, lymph will go to the subcapsular sinus, the cortical sinus, into the medullary sinus. So, from cortex to the medullary sinus. Now, from the medullary sinus, it goes, the, uh, it goes out through the efferent lymphatic vessel. So, pupunta siya sa afferent. Goes to the this organ, the lymph goes to the subcapsular sinus, cortex, medulla, inner medullary sinus, and it goes out at using the efferent lymphatic vessels. Okay? Again, the lymphatic vessels are provided with valves in a unidirectional lymph flow to prevent backflow of the lymph. Alright? To prevent backflow of the lymph. May valve siya at it is unidirectional. Bawal ang bumalik. Okay. Yeah, this is just a schematic structure of a lymph node showing you the afferent lymphatic vessels. Nakita niyo ba yung class? There is a valve para kapag pumasok na yung lymph dyan, hindi na siya lalabas. Okay? It goes first at the uh, cortex to the paracortical area to the medullary sinuses. Okay? At lalabas na siya using the efferent lymphatic vessels. Yun. Okay, papasok siya dito, pupunta siya sa cortex, para cortex, medullary sinuses, the lymph now will go out, sorry, the lymph now will go out using your efferent lymphatic vessels. Okay, unlike here at the blood vessels of the lymph node, artery which carries oxygenated blood goes to your, the, inside the organ, dun sila sa mga blood capillaries mag exchange and that non-oxygenated blood will go down, uh, uh, exiting at the vein. No, just like in any other organs. Okay? Okay, ano ba to? Okay, these are the lymphatic sinuses that are lined by littoral cells. No? The subcapsular sinus is located beneath the capsule. The cortical or intermediate sinus is located within the cortex. And obviously, your medullary sinus is located between the medullary cords. No, that those are the flow of the lymph. Alright, what is the function of your lymph nodes or your colani? So it filters the lymph, it provides lymph with lymphocytes, and the colani or the lymph node is part of the immunological defense of the body. Now if you notice if you have a wound infection in your right leg, for example, uh of course masakit yon meron din siyang infection, hindi lang siya doon sa site na yon. You will also experience inguinal pain. No? Inguinal sa may uh, singit. If you have right leg wound infection, try to palpate your inguinal area sa may singit. Not just masakit, meron din kayo mga pang robbery, um, parang mga maliit na kulan eh. No? Normal ba yon? Yes, actually. Your body is responding, your immune system is responding to that wound infection. Okay? 
that is what we call your immunological defense of the body. That's the function, one function of your lymph node. Now you have two types of immune response. If you notice, you have humoral and you have cellular. The difference is that when you say humoral immune response, it's the property of the B lymphocyte and the plasma cells. Your plasma cells actually can uh, produce antibodies. Your cellular immune response, on the other hand, is your T lymphocyte differentiation and activation. So, alam na alam na the humoral is B lymphocyte, cellular or cell mediated would be your T lymphocytes. Okay? Okay, so at this point, we have discussed two lymphatic organs. We have their thymus and you have your lymph node. Let's go now to your spleen. No? Spleen is located at the left upper quadrant of our body. No? Um, it has no afferent lymphatic vessels and no lymph sinuses. Okay? Bahat kaya? We'll discuss this in a while. No? There is a hilus or deep indentation. It also is encapsulated, which is composed of a dense connective tissue, just like your thymus and your uh, lymph node. It also has a trabeculae. Now, these are a fibrous extension into the organ. And the stroma is composed of your reticular tissue. Yeah. So, this area right here is the capsule. Since it, this is encapsulated, traversing into your organ is your trabeculae. You know, this is the trabeculae. But in the spleen, no, wala siyang, um, na wala siyang cortex, paracortex medulla area the spleen is composed of two areas okay w represents your white pulp r is your red pulp okay again white pulp and you have outside the white pulp is a red pulp so let's discuss first the white pulp in the white pulp it forms periarterolar lymphoid sheet or your pulse so if in the examination i mentioned pulse it's automatic yet you are at the white pulp okay around that artery that periarterolar lymphoid sheet it will leave the trabeculae to penetrate the parenchyma of the spleen now this may contain germinal centers your periarterolar lymphoid sheet is cons uh, consists of your t lymphocyte Whereas on that germinal center, the lymphatic nodule sa gitna na may pimpil staining is composed of B lymphocyte. Yeah, so this is an example of a white pulp of the spleen. This is no, the structure or the arrow that is pointed right now is the central arteriole. Okay, your central arteriole. This central arteriole, no, this is composed, yung gilid niya, is composed of your pulse, the peri arteriolar lymphoid sheet. As I mentioned, this is composed of your T lymphocyte. T lymphocyte. In the white pulp, not just the central arteriole, you may also find um, germinal center or lymphatic nodule. Look, the whole area, pakita natin to, ha? Lagyan natin ng arrow. The whole area here is your white pulp. Yeah, kaya yun, W. Now, in that area, you may find arterioles like this. Yeah, this is the arterioles. If I ask you, the whole structure pointed is central arteriole. Okay? This one, the whole structure pointed or area pointed is the white pulp. Okay? Now, if I ask you, lagyan natin ang color. Uh, yan. What is the structure surrounding the central arteriole? No? You will have to answer me with periarteriolar lymphoid or lymphatic sheet. Okay? Periarteriolar lymphatic sheet. Now, if I ask you, what type of, the, of lymphocytes are found? In this area, your answer would be your T lymphocyte, letter T. Okay, your T 
lymphocyte. Another possible question in the practical exam. This is the nodule or lymphatic tissue, right? That is the corona. Corona is the dense, is the dark staining, and the lighter staining here is the germinal center. At the germinal center, if I ask you what type of lymphocytes are found at the germinal center, you will answer B lymphocyte. Okay? And the tandaan, di ba? Maraming parts ang white pulp, like this one. Kapag nakita ka na ng arteriole, uy, this is the central, this is the central arteriole. The, the line, it lines with T lymphocyte. This is the germinal center, the whole area. Itong buong area to is the white pulp, no? With nodular lymphatic tissue and a central arteriole. Again, this is uh, covering the central arteriole is the pulse, which is composed of T lymphocyte, and the germinal center is composed of your B lymphocyte. Okay? Wala yun sa, well, nandito yan, pero kailangan nagnotes kayo para mas matintandaan. Okay, let's go to the red pulp. No? Red pulp is the area and it surrounds the white pulp. It is consists of your plexus of venous sinuses. So they are subdivided into anastomosing cords known as your splenic cords. Yan. Splenic cords of Billroth or your pulp cords. But, um, if you answer pop cords, we'll accept it. But please, ito na lang yung alalahanin nyo. May splenic naman kasi to para hindi kayo malito. Splenic cords of Billroth. It contains large number of RBCs that fills the lumen of the sinuses and infiltrates the splenic cords. It is also responsible for its color in fresh preparation. And it is uh, that, that air right there uh, is composed also. You may find macrophages. Red blood cells, not just lymphocyte, you may also find platelets and a few plasma cells. The one that is responsible for antibody production. Okay? Your marginal zone in the red pulp, that is no, the transitional region between the white pulp and the red pulp. So your clue there, pag red pulp, puro dugo. Okay? White pulp, merong germinal center, central arterial. In the marginal zone of the red pulp, it contains smaller venous sinuses. It receives the incoming arterial blood. And this is the site where blood-borne cells and particulate matter first come into contact with the splenic parenchyma at the marginal zone. And then, yeah. The lymphocyte found here at the zone of the recirculating pool will leave the blood of the sinuses to enter the periarterial lymphoid sheet. Okay? So what type of lymphocyte again are found at the pulse? It is your T lymphocyte. Okay? Your T, letter T. Yeah. So this area right here are the medullary uh, the splenic cords of Billroth and the S would be the splenic sinuses, no? Uh, we I mentioned this last week, no? So spleen, the red pulp we did the splenic sinuses. The dark area are your uh, splenic cords of Billroth. Okay. In the spleen, no, uh, the function of the spleen actually, wait lang, yeah. They are grave red for worn out RBC. What, do, what does that mean? Um, if ever, na malapit na siyang mag 120 days, pupunta na siya sa spleen. That's it. No? It's a reservoir of RBCs. Formation of lymphocytes are also um, uh, found at the spleen. Removal it removes particulate matters in the circulation, and the spleen also is active in immune response to microorganisms such as your bacteria, viruses, and some foreign bodies. Okay. Uh, okay. So arteries, the branches of the splenic artery will enter the hilus and pass along the trabeculae within which they branch repeatedly. So mas makita natin dito. <clears throat> Asan po ang white pulp and red pulp muna? So this one is the red pulp. Yan, sa labas. Asan yung white pulp? As th if this is the central artery or arteriole, ayun po ang periarterial or lymphoid sheet nakakabit. Doon sa gilid ng central arteriole and what type of 
lymphocyte of 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 lymphocyte is present you have the t lymphocyte at the peripheral zone is your germinal center comprising your b cells okay so if this is the trabecular artery it goes to the central artery no it's closed circulation what does it uh san pupunta yan pupunta yan sa uh, splenic cords splenic sinuses and goes to the trabecular vein san po ang trabecular vein yan ano ibig sabihin ng vein it carries away from that organ muna from if this is the spleen again from trabecular artery goes to the central artery no pupunta yan sa white pulp red pulp it it goes um out at the trabecular vein and it goes out into circulation it goes back to the heart okay that's it that's the um uh blood flow in the spleen okay so in the sinuses wag na yan ito na yung pinaka magandang explanation alamin niyo lang kung saan trabecular artery central artery goes to the splenic cords of bilirat and splenic sinuses goes out through using your trabecular vein and it goes back to the circulation to go to the heart for oxygenation okay yeah and so this is just an example of a splenic venous sinuses the one that the, the these cells that are pointed right now are your endothelial cells so this is the splenic sinuses yeah this one are the splenic cords of bilirat okay this is a picture showing you the erythrocyte removal by splenic sinuses so as in the doc if these are the rbc these are actually your worn out rbc no um this is your macrophage kakainin na macrophage 140 day 120 days na rbc so what does it do no paghihiwala niya yung him saka yung globin part ng rbc so yung him will be reutilized and the globin part would be found in the circulation to become plasma protein pa rin. okay so walang walang talo kapag 120 days ng rbc nyo yung him will uh, bind to another globin the globin will go to the circulation and serve as your plasma protein okay yes and lastly your palatine tonsils no uh maraming type ng tonsils you have lingual tonsils your palatine tonsils uh tonsil pharyngeal tonsils marami but the palatine tonsils these are paired oval shaped bodies they are located in the oropharynx between the glossa palatine and the pharyngopalatine arches it is composed or consists of dense accumulation of lymphatic tissues in the connective tissue of the mucosa Yon. this is the pharyngeal tonsils so may so pharynx area the palatine tonsils and the lingual tonsils doc nakikita mo natin yung lingual tonsils the lingual tonsils are found at the posterior of the tongue Ang nakikita natin when we open our mouth for oral examination is the palatine tonsils. Okay? Doc, paano pag malaki ang tonsils ko? Pinapa, uh, pinapatanggal ba yan? Depends. If you are having four times episode of tonsillitis in a year, for four consecutive years, you are a candidate for tonsillectomy. Doc, paano pag sa isang ton, seven times? Definitely you are a candidate for tonsillectomy. But ka mag-tonsillectomy, paano na yung tonsils ko? Marami pa namang tonsils. The pharyngeal tonsils and the lingual tonsils and also the lymphatic organs. Uh, what are the complications kapag hindi ka nagpa-opera, hindi napatanggal yung tonsils mo? You would develop rheumatic heart disease or heart problem. Okay? Imagine mo, sino-sino doc ang nagkakaroon ng Malagi nagkakaroon ng tonsillitis, yung matatamis, yung mal, uh, kumakain na matatamis na hindi nag-water after. Uh, pwede rin mag-inoculate yung bacteria. Uh, ano pa ba? Maraming causes eh ng, ng, ng acute tonsillopharyngitis. But usually, it is, it is adjusted or it is managed by taking antibiotics. 
Okay? Alam nyo, class, kapag nagkaroon ka ng acute tonsillopharyngitis, para ka rin nagka-COVID. Kasi COVID-like symptom ang tonsillitis, sore throat, fever, body pains, etc. Okay? So, if you have, for right now, if you are experiencing a tonsillitis-like symptoms, eh, warranted na magpa-swab ka. Kasi it really mimics COVID. Okay. Palatine tonsils covered on their free surface by stratified squamous, non-cornified epithelium. And we have these deep invaginations called our tonsillar crypts. So, mamaya, papakita natin yan. The tonsillar crypts and the lining epithelium. The capsule of the dense connective tissue in the tonsils is over-attached or at the basal surface of the tonsils. And uh, if the three organs I've discussed, you have thymus, lymph node and their spleen are are encapsulated take note class no pakitandaan the palatine tonsils are partly encapsulated okay that is a partly encapsulated lymphatic organ okay at that at this tonsils the lymphocytes and neutrophils will pass through the epithelium which is stratified squamous non keratinized and they are found in the saliva, called their salivary corpuscles. They appear as degenerating vesicular elements with the pycnotic nucleus as description, and they are surrounded by clear vesicle containing granules. Now, if ever na meron kayong tonsillitis at namumula talaga yung tonsils nyo, make sure na check nyo kung may white part. If ever magkakaroon na white part ng tonsils nyo, that is your exudates. Meaning, uh, Yung, ito, mga neutrophils na yan, malipasite. Those white blood cells will accumulate on that tonsils, signifying that there is an ongoing infection. Okay? Kailangan matrip na kagad yun. Kasi these patients with tonsillitis, uh, they are having difficulty in swallowing. No? Ang pwede lang lang maswallow would be the liquids. Yeah. So this is an example of your tonsils. So this, uh, this is the uh, capsule. This is the stratified squamous epithelium, and you have your lymph nodes. Yeah. No, ano pa ba? These are the crypts. Sorry, this is the capsule. But see right here are your tonsillar crypts. Okay, tonsillar crypts. Mamaya in the laboratory we will be um, giving you clues if this is a palatine tonsils or not at the laboratory here. But in, in right now, if this is their tonsillar crypts, yan, yung pang invaginations na yan, like this one is also a tonsillar crypts. Uh, you have your epithelium, the stratified squamous, non-cornified epithelium. What else? Mamaya, maraming structures. Mas maganda. Okay. These are your important histologic comparisons. You have the thymus, lymph node, spleen. Actually, class, the mouth is the mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, example of which is your tonsils. Okay? Look at the cortex and the medulla. No? Uh, your thymus distinctly present on cortex and medulla as well as the, the lymph node. Wala pong cortex and medulla ang, ang tonsils at ang spleen. Ang spleen po, White pulp at red pulp lang. Okay? Look again. At the lymphoid nodules, there are no lymphoid nodules in the thymus. Present sila sa tonsils. Obviously, look. Yan ang mga lymph nodes ng tonsils. Present ang lymph nodes sa... Uh, present ang lymphatic nodules sa cortex na lymph node and also at the white pulp. Wala pong lymph nodes sa red pulp. No blood vessels po yung meron doon. What else? Another differentiating factor would be the lymphatic vessels. At the thymus, there are no afferents. No? Just few afferents that are in septi. In the tonsils, there are no afferents. Only the efferent vessels are present. How about at the lymph node? Of course, afferents at the capsule emptying into the subcapsular sinus and the efferent at the carinum exiting the lymph nodes. Okay? What about the spleen? There are no afferents, just efferents in the trabeculae. So in short, 
all the lymphatic organs we've discussed, only the lymph nodes have this afferent and efferent. Their thymus, your mouth, or the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue in the spleen, they don't have afferents. Efferents lang. Okay? What about unique characteristic features? As I mentioned a while ago, when you say thymus, at the medulla, you will find your Hassel's corpuscles or your thymic corpuscles. What about at the tonsils? You will find tonsillar crypts that are lined by surface mucosa. And also, you may also find epithelial M cells in the mucosa over the pair's patches that are found in the ilium. Okay, what else? Lymph nodes. Unique features of your lymph nodes, you have your paracortical region between cortex and medulla with high endothelial venules. Okay? High endothelial venules that is found at the paracortical region. Uh, medullary cords and sinuses can also be found at the medulla of the lymph nodes. And lastly, the spleen. It is characterized by a white pulp and red pulp. When you say white pulp, it is composed of central arterioles. Again, class, it is surrounded by your periarterial lymphoid sheet, and they are they have this T lymphocyte. Okay. Also, at the white pulp, you have their lymphatic nodules, and you may also find that at the germinal center. What type of lymphocyte are found in there? It's the B lymphocyte. And lastly. The major red pulp component of your spleen is composed of splenic cords of Billroth and your splenic sinuses. Okay, thank you for listening.